Ahoy there, mateys. <laughs> this is Jim Canatelli speaking, a.k.a. your good old pal Fishman Sam from the slasher horror film Slaughter Beach. <laughs> and you're listening to the On the Slab Horror Show. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the On The Slab Horror Show, the only show you need on a Friday night. Why I do this on a Friday night? Because Friday night is horror night. I don't have my t-shirt that actually says the, the slogan, but um, it is Friday night. And for you gents who don't know, uh, on a Friday night, we used to get a free copy of horror movies on free-to-air TV after 10 o'clock. That's where we see, I've seen a lot of the original films that I've seen. The very first one I remember watching was Nightmare on Elm Street. Perfect. 12 years of age after 10 o'clock sold you have that uh i have oh you really see it i've got this one. Oh, nice dude yeah um but uh the boys aren't here with me to help me with the uh, the intro again unfortunately mm-hmm. work and prior commitments came up but i do have a full house here tonight which is normally tombstone ted dynamo's dozen and the king but tonight we're joined by the owner and creator of clock out films he was the director and writer of the movie we're bringing up tonight uh called slaughter beach uh this is mr dan davis how are you sir doing good how are you greg not too bad not too bad the usual the usual doing what i do best talk shit about horror films <laughs> same and I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that so thank you for having yeah. us on Absolutely, thanks for taking the time to come out. Um, we have the cinematographer and producer of Slaughter Beach, Mr. Brett Taylor. How are you? I'm doing great, Greg. Just I, fantastic. I, I can't wait I can, to get started. <laughs> I can confirm his name is not James Taylor. He is not the original James Taylor. Unfortunately. No. <laughs> and then we have an actor from the film who was the main protagonist, noticed by the hat. This is Mr. Fisherman Sam, Mr. Jim Cantonelli. How are you, sir? Yeah, hoy, motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm doing Did I get good. the second name right? It's, it's Cantonelli, but it's all right. Damn it. I'm used to it getting butchered by English teachers in grade school. <laughs> I was going to say, don't call. I was going to say, don't call me English. I've already threatened to kick you out of the chat once. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you do as, as I said, the movie tonight, uh, the lads were kind enough to send us a screener to, was Slaughter Beach, um, which obviously came from the director and writer Dan there in the corner. Um, do you want to give us a bit about the movie? Well, uh, for those who haven't seen it, um, Slaughter Beach is a tongue-in-cheek slasher buddy comedy. Um, takes place in its kind of own timeline. You could say... Um, inspired by 80 slashers um it's about two wannabe superheroes who go on the trail of the killer fisherman fishman sam in order to revitalize the town it's uh, th- that's the best way of describing it what mm-hmm. i found um obviously because i didn't look anything up obviously we reached out and we were talking and you sent us the screener uh, i found it to be do you remember jay and silent bob strike back Yep. Yes. Uh, it's like it's like Blunt Man and Chronic, um, take on crime fighting. <laughs> it's it's funny you say that because uh, Kevin Smith is like a major influence of mine. So, Ke- Kevin Smith has to be a major influence on most directors. He's just yeah, phenomenal. especially these days, you know. Um, but yeah, actually, the the Defender Benders was did start as like a a comic I drew in high school. <laughs> um, because I was inspired by Blunt Man and Chronic, so I wanted to make two idiot superheroes of my own, and then they kind of like got fleshed out into their own personalities. The, the, and, then I, like, and then twenty years later, I like you know what? Let me bring those characters back and try to find a movie to put them in. The um, the thing there is though, it doesn't matter what anyone does, no one's ever going to have a better villain name than Blunt Man and Chronic did with Cockknocker. Oh yeah, I know. Especially um, the uh, the actor who played Cockknocker. Yes, Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill, voice yeah. of the Joker. Mm-hmm. Great, it's amazing you go voice of the Joker instead of Luke Skywalker. I know. 
I have respect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're but all in a Batman mood right now after the the trailer dropped from yesterday. Yes, right here. So nice. Same nice. one. <laughs> um, I got my, uh, Michael Keaton right there. That's the best Batman, lads. To be fair, mm-hmm. it may be a horror show, but you got you got to throw respect to the name. Michael Keaton is, in fact, the best Batman. Oh yeah. Well, mm-hmm. you know, Michael Keaton's sort of horror. You know, he got Beetlejuice, which is a horror comedy. So it's, we're in the yeah, world. absolutely. He has White Noise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, White Noise. He was pretty good in that. I totally too. forgot about that one. <laughs> and then he, I think and he, he has. Was, I think he has another. He was in the really scarier version of Jack Frost. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That was pure horror. That was. <laughs> Um, but that one didn't hilarious. have that one didn't have Shannon Elizabeth in it, so mm. it had to be worse off. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, but, uh, you know, as it says, uh, Slaughter Beach. You sent me the, the screener. I had a good watch of it. Um, it was good fun to watch. Um, mm. As it says to you, a lot of movies nowadays take themselves too seriously, um, and whatnot. So I found this one very out there. It wasn't what I expected. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can appreciate the way you were going with it, and I really enjoyed the way the twists and turns along the way. Now I said to you before I came on, one of the opening couple of scenes, I was like, "Oh, this this strikingly similar to the Mute Later, which is one of my favorite films." <laughs> um, and then obviously the conversation sparked with my hat and stuff. Um, but yeah, I could see a lot of influence from certain '80s slashers. Mm. Maybe not, maybe not the big ones. <laughs> But like um, some of the lesser some known of the, ones. Like, well, well, I'm pretty inspired by Elm Street because you know we have Fishman Sam, who's kind of like the kooky, wisecracking, you know, villain. But I also wanted to kind of like, you know, I like that summer feel. So obviously the Friday Thirteenth movies were in influence, and I really love Prowler and Madman. Some of the some of the obscure ones. I just wanted to kind of have it be that random VHS that you found. Like doing in the aisle in the uh, in the video store, you're like Slaughter Beach. What's this? Let's pop that in. Yeah, so that's that's what I used to do growing up. That's how I've seen a lot of the horror movies that I done. I used to go to the video shop with the lads, and I'd go and find some of the worst looking cases that I could find, uh, and see if see if we can get good ones from it. Now I'm gonna tell you out front here, right? I got Wrong Turn One. Mm-hmm. Which was 2003. That was phenomenal with Elijah Duskew. Oh yeah, that's a good one. House. That's a classic. Ooh, which Ooh, house? House one. House, one house or two, two is terrible. House two is terrible. Oh, you don't like House two? I love House two because it's oh. so goofy. No, I hate House two. I love the first one. Hate the second one. Don't know why. I probably, it's a movie I should like. I just never, never got into it. And the other one was Dog Soldiers. Dog nice. Soldiers. Yeah, which will come up later on in the thing, but. Like, out of the countless number of movies that I've watched, they're three of the best ones that I got. Mm-hmm. Nice. No, but like, yeah. yeah, and I'll always, I'll always remember the artwork. It was the remember like the zombie finger pushing. Yeah, the, the finger going the into the ding dong, yeah. you're dead as the tagline. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, but yeah, you could see a lot of influence that you had, obviously, on you from sort of 80s, early 90s slashers. I'm going to go early 90s, probably 2000s, because I brought it up to you off screen. Obviously, Fisherman Sam has a striking resemblance to um, I Know What You Did Last Summer. And the well, is that a, a much better beard. Anyway. And like I said, it's funny. It's like it's, it, was, it was not an influence. No, I, I like the movie just fine. But like going into it, we were going for more like, like the 80s feel. So, I mean, though, if, like, let's be fair. If you put a yellow raincoat on him. People quite, and if you have a kids in it and they have a yellow raincoat, people can pay to it. So it doesn't matter. I so know, many it, movie looks have been done. So many movie looks have been done. You're gonna like come across one that's gonna be similar to another. I mean, it can't be. I mean, bad Space Ghost is basically, basically Batman with no ears. So there you go. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Does that that's true. villain in that movie even have an, like a villainous name? I forget. No, I think he just has a name because he was just, just a normal a, I think person. He was just a nameless character because he was just—he was meant to be like a mystery. Ah, okay. And he just got knocked down. That was all it was, and he just came back for revenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, but obviously, the look of Fisherman Sam, and you see it early-ish, but it's darkened out. Um, obviously, you get the kills early, 
I mean, you must be a hell of a fisherman to, to, to hook people up like that. <laughs> <laughs> All natural born talent. To... <laughs> You know, we wanted the, the film to have like some, kind of its own reality. It was like, is he using like a super lure? Like, how is he getting people? Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, don't, don't look into it that much. Yeah, because no. a lot of the weapons we used were pretty real. I mean, the two hooks I used are gaffers. Like yeah. the big one I have in the end was made by our friend Gus Clark. It was just like bent aluminum, but like the smaller one was an actual one we bought at bait shop. Um, the anchor was real, weighed a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, that that was a vicious kill. A lot, yeah. a lot of the uh, yeah, a lot of the props were basically like Goodwill finds. We would go into like Goodwill shops and try to be like and those would be like our what would write the scenes for us. All right, okay, let's look around for some fishing stuff. What do we got? What do we got? Okay, kind of like a uh, awesome boy in the basement finding his cape for the first time. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was awesome though, because um, Joe, you know as I says, it's it's very eighties slasher movie that's it like if this was made in the 80s it's perfect it stays there like um you're gonna find people being like oh it, it's not this it's not that um because it's the way it's done mm -hmm. but you're sitting down to watch a horror movie called slaughter beach i don't know what you like expect. what do you expect some high art there you know <laughs> no, but it's not, not even that like it could be called anything do mm -hmm. you know what i mean but if it's not to their standard or what you'll find is a lot of reviewers Oh, I don't like this kind of horror. Don't watch the fucking thing, then. <laughs> yeah. Now, if I Just recall, Dan and Jim, wasn't there an original name before we decided to call it Slaughter Beach? Yeah, it's Defender Benders in Slaughter Beach. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> so that was that was the because so, like I wanted to have like the what's that one movie called like slime I figured, the polar and the I slime polarama like it's one of those yeah. kind of eighties titles. I figured you're inspired from the Ernest movies. And Ernest movies, too. So, like, Ernest, Scared Stupid, you know, Defender Benders and Slaughter Beach. Ernest Goes to Camp, because aside from, like, 80s slashers, I'm inspired by a lot of all the stupid 80s comedies. So, you know, like Meatballs <laughs> and the Ernest movies. Ernest, what... Ernest was great. I used to love Ernest growing up. No, no, he's a classic. Yeah. yeah. He's a freaking legend, man. That was I, I don't think he ever got the break he deserved. I thought he was... If you like look at the way he does all those like little side characters when he's like not being earnest but like somebody else is like you can tell he had like a lot of range. I I actually always thought he could have been a really good psycho killer in in a in a horror film. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. He would have been great. He was is he was a Shakespearean like trained actor. Like there's an old news interview where he's performing like Hamlet or Macbeth or something and you totally buy it and then he breaks character and goes Thou Tucker is thou before me. Know what I mean, Burn? <laughs> <laughs> and it's brilliant. It's just there. Uh, the way he can, like, yeah. slip through those tunes. He was exactly, he was very similar, unfortunately, I'd say, for him. I know he made whatever money he made from Ernest, and he made a good living off it. It's unfortunate that he kind of came up in that kind of comedy way that Rick Moranis and all did as well. Mm -hmm. um, because, obviously, when Mick, Rick Moranis was on top of his game, that was game over for anyone. He was taking oh, yeah. them parts, simple as that. Oh, yeah. yeah, he pretty much steals every scene as the key master in Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah, he was brilliant. Mm -hmm. And Brett, you, but, um, can I just say for one minute, Brett, you look like a meme right now. What do you mean? <laughs> like what? school picture memes that they always post. You, you look do, like that. Do you, know, do you know what actually it could be? Do you remember the memes from, uh, I don't know whether he's watched The Boys? Oh, um, yes, deep, I have. I've yeah. seen deep, The Boys. Deep and taught with the deep. <laughs> <laughs> I know what mean you're talking about. Yeah, there's a great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, obviously for yourself, Jim, playing Fisherman Sam. No, no, the other Jim, the one behind you. <laughs> the real Jim. <laughs> um, what was it like on set, obviously being a villain? Uh, well, funny enough, it was actually the first serious acting gig I, I was doing because um, – Prior to this, like um, I met Dan and Brett through we were college buddies. So before that, like I got to want to make movies since I was ten because I wanted to be a writer and director, like Tim Burton, John Carpenter, David Fincher, and those guys, James Rolfe. The big, the big boys. <laughs> yeah, the heroes. And um, I just was a very shy kid, so that's part of why I was like, oh, I can't really be an actor. But meeting Dan, like we were making our own films, so we helped on, and um, he had me like play a little parts in his 
and senior projects and then in slaughter beach um originally i was just the prop guy ironically for fish man so i made like the bait shop sign and the bait in the can logo um also you made all of them yeah 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 we printed out that lo that, that uh that label for the bait can that's yeah. awesome so yeah <laughs> now dan wanted a dead cartoon fish with a tongue hanging out so i just sketched it and then inked it brought in a photoshop to give it the rest of the design it was a lot of fun like in hindsight and awesome boys uh a b logo i drew that on his shirts and i had to redraw because it would fade in the sun <laughs> but um yeah then we had an original guy named brock taylor or brock, brock Vicker. vickers who's a brilliant actor and yeah he was just too busy at the time we were we um we shot maybe about 20 percent of that bait shop monologue with him but it was only like from his shoulder to the to the guys so he's still technically involved. and then the next weekend he couldn't person holding it. the fish and we're like well ugh. yeah so but yeah he's so i'm like i'm like well, i'm like uh, all right jim you're up put this yeah. hat on get in there all right jim you have a beard and you're fat so you're good for the role here <laughs> tell me why for your words no, <laughs> I was it was like, a happy you know, mistake no i'm kidding it wasn't a mistake it was um... you know you know the, you know the best thing about being fat we're harder to kidnap right <laughs> <laughs> fat, fat people don't get kidnapped <laughs> too heavy uh, no i had the intent of um of actually using jim as as the understudy if, if it didn't work out because me and jim were toying with the idea we were always going through the dialogue together for fishman sam so like having a replacement to fill in the fill in the shoes it just felt natural for jim to take it up yeah and making the props because i knew he had the because i knew he had the chops he just didn't have the confidence the chops. so i so i needed to, i needed to push him in there yeah because making Absolutely. the props helped me get into the character's mindset i guess he could say and um it was weird because like while i was making them like dan ordered this the yellow hat and like it came in the mail and he like put it on and did his Sam impression and then gave it to me. He's like, here, put it on just for fun. I was like, oh, this is foreshadowing. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like Elvis Costello putting like the, uh, the glasses on for the first time. And then like his manager's like, all right, there's the look. That'll work. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> yeah, hey, Jim. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was challenging because again, it was my first big acting role. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I was nervous to be honest with you. I was like, oh my. Because Dan wanted to be like silly with fish puns, but also scary or ferocious was the key word he always used for me. Ferocious for it. So like I, I just what helped was like um, I just was inspired by various movie villains. As so I was like, all right, just study what they do, and that helped me feel comfortable to do it. So like um, since we're both real big Batman guys, I I told Jim to kind of like. Uh... Look to, look to Danny DeVito as inspiration because I love DeVito's, the way DeVito's like, Danny DeVito had that low register voice. What am I, Dan? Yeah. Chop liver? I'm a Batman fan too. You said both you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, DeVito's Penguin was the was a main influence of his laugh and his gross demeanor. Like he was just disgusting, but he wallowed in it. He didn't care, and you know he had this diabolical like this grin. He enjoyed what he did. I feel like, well, this guy's enjoying what he's doing. It's part of his business. Um, he and Otter got to make them dollars somewhere. Yeah, yeah. He's got you well, know twenty five cent twenty five cent a can of uh, fish cuts isn't going to get you very far. <laughs> yeah, he needed the marketing team. <laughs> I feel like well, speaking charge more for your bait, <laughs> Jim. Speaking of props, don't you have one that you haven't showed us yet? You know, the the prop oh. that we oh, never the used. the thing that we never shot or used. Yep. So you yeah, have that it's, it's, still, yeah, it's still interesting. Is this, is this going to get me kicked off YouTube, lads? Oh, no. no, no, no. It's no, funny. No. Oh, I don't think so. Maybe for a split second. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Uh, you, can, you can take it up with the rest of the lads if we get banned. No, I'm kidding. It's just a little Fishman Sam pup. We were going to do a, a, a Jim Henson commercial. commercial. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you were going to do it in, the way they did it for Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. We had the, well, the, well, not, the video not games necessarily. Together. Not like the marionette kill, but just <laughs> like a. Oh, uh, he's like going a, for a cheap, it. A cheap local commercial of Fishman <laughs> Sam. Remember how there was a the radio commercial midway through yeah, the yeah, film? Yeah, yeah. There was going to be another commercial that pops up with him as like a little. Oh, there. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> Where's his yellow hat? Oh, we couldn't find one, so I put like a little captain hat on him instead. <laughs> there we go. Much hey, much better. Hey, there he is. <laughs> what happened? If anyone from uh, I know what you did last summer is watching this, somebody's getting sued. <laughs> Hey, no, no hat here. <laughs> it's a comedy. Parodies are fair use. So there you go. That's true. Absolutely. We know Brooks did. I mean, <laughs> we we actually had um, probably the, the biggest parody of the year. But we had the cast and the main ones. Come on. I had the director. I had the main actress and the girl who created the main one costume. Wow. Uh, Tatiana Duchel, Steve, Stephen Mort and Crystal Martin were on a couple of weeks ago. Back when it was in the cinema just before Christmas. Well, that's badass. Yeah. And like we still haven't got it over here, so I haven't seen it yet. But oh, um I'll, I'll endeavor to get there, but parodies are great because you can get yeah, away which, with it. By the way, David like. David Howard Thornton, brilliant. He's crushing everything, isn't he? I brilliant. know, right? Um as I says I said on that show, I says he's the he's probably the hottest thing in, in horror acting right now. Mm-hmm. Yep. The, the new Grinch movie? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, the main about the mean one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the mean one. I thought I thought I heard Terrifier too. That's still really good too. <laughs> Terrifier too was phenomenal. That's oh, so phenomenal. good. Phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll just say to you here now that scene. That if people haven't seen it, we've done a review on it, but that scene, oh. everybody oh, yeah. just knows. <laughs> Remember when the first one came out and it had that scene, this thing. I just gotta say, I felt scene. very salty after watching that scene. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. That oh, was, so there you uh, go. There, there's a little hint for the people that have seen it. And, uh, it was pickled and fried <laughs> and everything. Jesus, it was rough. Oh my God. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, lads. There was a couple of really creative kills in this. Now, albeit kind of silly, but not stupid, if you know what I mean. The way it, it, was, like in, that fine line, line. it was in line. Yeah, it was in line with the way the movie was going. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Mission Hulk pulling your one's face off. Mm hmm. Oh, sorry, I don't want to give away too much, but that one happens early. <laughs> um, but there was a couple of really creative ones um, and whatnot. I don't want to go too much into it because obviously it, it's... Yeah, spoiler territory, I guess. Yeah. Well, I, I normally do put out a spoiler warning anyway because these things happen, but... Yeah, uh, true. Movies relatively new-ish. Well, those, those all go to credit to... Izzy. Izzy? Mm-hmm. Yes, Izzy... Yeah, the trauma queen, trauma queen, is the trauma thing. queen effects, trauma queen effects. Big up, busy. <laughs> yeah, she, she has amazing, amazing work uh, for like you know kill scenes for like wounds, uh, creature design. Like she's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we oh, owe yeah. a lot to her for that kill montage. Oh yeah, yeah. I had like a, uh, I pretty much had all the storyboards that I. Who's texting us? Um, I had all the storyboards like drawn out, and I would show her them, and she looked at like a couple of them. She was just like, "Okay, I can do these." I was like, "Really? Okay." She's like, "Yeah." And then she came, and she had like this big um, layer of face that she would put on the the girl, and then underneath, she had like the the the, the meat underlay. Was a, then, I found it after, so it, was, after it was like it was like a two layer like mask. That she put after on the, the, I, what I found was after the face kind of came off, it was very similar to John Carpenter's "They Live" kind of look. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could see yeah. that along with yeah. a blend of Frank from the Hellraiser. Yes, Julia. Yes, yeah, I'm not a fan of Hellraiser, but now yeah. someone told us that the the tune. Um, I remember after someone watched it, they said the tune was similar to "Dead Alive" from Peter Jackson. Oh yes. That's but not th- bad either. In terms, of, in terms of the movie. Yeah, in terms of the movie. Yeah, I, 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 I could kill. see that, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't mind. I only really watched that probably about three weeks ago for the first time in about 15 years. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. It's, it's a very fun kind of almost rip-off of Evil Dead. Oh, hell yeah. You yeah. can call it that, yeah, yeah. But, it's but, funny. Uh, it's it, fun. It's, it is fun. Yeah, it's Dead, Dead Alive is actually the first one of the first VHS covers I remember seeing in a blockbuster with the woman's yeah, the, yeah. Uh, I honestly, honestly thought as a little kid what I thought the movie was was this woman ate something and this little skeleton man was like in her stomach and like crawled up <laughs> and flying and out the mouth. Um, uh, well, there, there's one lads. 
right, obviously Dead Alive was was 1992, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do you know what the connection? Do you know what the connection between Dead Alive and King Kong is? Peter uh, Jackson, directed by Peter Jackson. Apart, apart from Peter Jackson. Apart from, uh, it, <laughs> I was about to say. There's, a, there's actually a connection. There's another connection. Does it have to do with the, the spider, monkey at the, the beginning? Spider monkey being on Skull? The, the, monk, yeah. the monkey rat oh, on, yeah. on, on, on Island. Skull Island. Yep. Yeah, that's right. It's on the crate. <laughs> yeah, they're on Skull Island. So there's a theory that it's it's in the one. I have to watch that again. That was just a wild guess. The, Sumat <laughs> the, Sumatran, uh, the Sumatran rat monkey. Yes. Yeah, I do remember that in like a, a things you didn't know or something about that. And yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Because it, it just goes by in a split second. Mm. I actually completely forgot about that opening scene, but like, I could see that I could see that the tone, the way that's done. Uh, obviously, I don't I don't mean to sound offensive, but it's, it's a movie that's not taking itself overly too serious, which is mm -hmm. a good thing as well, because mm -hmm. if certain movies try and take themselves too seriously and don't work, it looks terrible. Yeah. Um, when when they're in terms of the funny comedy horror side you can get away with a lot more which is great um yeah you can be a lot more cartoonish with it i guess you could say yeah slapstick -y. so yeah splatstick so, uh, Ray sam <laughs> raimi call it good old sam raimi another oh. evil dead reference in there <laughs> <laughs> um what was it like for you brett uh obviously you've been the most quiet here at the minute um huh? being behind yeah. the camera and and doing all sorts of work obviously having to get the light and right and stuff oh yeah um the lighting for first majority of it uh was filmed with small up lights and then after a while we graduated to you know the big light sets but um i'm actually using the up lights right now to illuminate myself that's why i look for it like yeah we only yeah. had like <laughs> maybe a set of two lights to work with for the yep. whole movie so that, so that's, that's why, why like that's why the light that's there. why it's that's why it's like not that fancy looking at all you'll watch it and be like there's no there's no fancy backlighting on this there's no i also i also shot it mainly on a shoulder mount with a g a lumix gh4 and i had a sigma lens which was 18 to 250 throughout the entire production i just basically used one lens mm -hmm. And then obviously the drone shots too, which was filmed on a Phantom 3 DJI. Mavic Air. Yep. I don't know. I don't know how anybody uses those drones. My young lad has a drone and it's fucking ridiculous to use. <laughs> oh, we crashed it a few times. <laughs> he's he's there doing flips in the kitchen with it and everything, and I'm looking at it going, I can't even get this fucking thing to go up. <laughs> um, um, unbeknownst to me that you could uh, buy wraps for them I wish I would have known it before we filmed this one scene Jim remembers oh yeah <laughs> we were no. trying to film this one scene um, of Fish on Man's a bridge camp. on a bridge he's going from one area of like the island to another and we were trying to get it with a drone shot right and the drone was dying in midair, and it was about to land in the water. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. And then I'm trying to move it over, and it was just keeps landing into the water, landing into the water. I'm like, no. Finally, I was able to kind of get it to settle into the land, and then it crashes into a tree. I was like, well, at least it didn't drown, and we can save the car. I remember, like, just standing there and just seeing it go like this, and then, like, banking left, and it hit a branch, and then I saw sparks. <laughs> bank okay. left, bank left. <laughs> and then uh, uh that the scene didn't make it into film. After all of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what we shot prior to that made it in the film. That's where he's going and uh looking through his tackle box and yeah. uh, all the little severed ear severed uh yeah, it's, tackle box. It's, looking for bait and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, just the production... before the scene with the that's just before the scene with the two lads on the pier. Mm -hmm. yeah. The production value of this film was probably like a little bit over five grand in terms of, yeah, I, I think so. With, uh, we raised, 5, yeah, about 5,000 yeah. pounds. We raised about 250, uh, um, $2,500 
on Indiegogo for like special effects and marketing reasons. But we did that afterwards, like later on into production and everything else was either, it was really micro budget with um, all our own equipment, all our personal own equipment and that Super we already skeleton had. crew. Yep. It was mostly just me, Brett and Jim just kind of like shifting roles the whole time yeah oh yeah so, nice so if brett needed to like handle a light and i knew the shot better i would just get on camera if if uh if jim wasn't getting a stunt right but he knew how to like handle the camera better like we would get um we would put brett into the fishman costume or something like that we would just keep shifting and shifting and shifting until there are was... nights where um they're filming <laughs> boys and i'd be in full fishman costume and i'm like holding the boom mic with the earphones on <laughs> <laughs> i mean like I, I bring this up quite regularly when we have indie directors and stuff on when you have to do it that way you're a lot more passionate when it's your own movie and and like you have mates involved obviously these are all really close um that are helping you out with it of course you're going to be more passionate to make things work so, i mean mm -hmm. you could throw together that and say Oh, I'll raise ten grand on Indiegogo and, and blow the budget on. Oh, I need to get paid this or I need to get paid that. But you look like you put it in and done the best with what you've had for it. Mm -hmm. We we did, and uh, you know we could say the cliche thing. It's like, oh, we're a, we're a family, and you know, I mean, we pretty much we grew up together, so we kind of are. Yeah. So we, I also like, had to make each other's shout out. Each other's weaknesses. I have to make a shout out to one of our crew members, Jason Smith. Jason, he, without Jason, this help. movie probably wouldn't have been made. He probably he got us out of so much trouble. Like every yeah. every kill scene that you see, um, he was there with a big uh, water bucket, cleaning everything off because we had to like start setting up for like the next scene, like uh, down the street, you know. And fair, he would like fair play to him. stay behind and start cleaning up like the dock for us. He's like, "All right, everything's washed off, guys. I'm ready to start working again." Yeah, and he, he yeah. provided so, some nice breaks too. Take a, break too. Take a yeah. smoke break. <laughs> <laughs> Jason was like also um our ride he <clears throat> he picked me up um our makeup artist Amy who's also a scream queen um he also yeah he yeah he he's a cinematographer and a lot of my stuff but yeah he was wore many hats. <laughs> so yeah. he's obviously uh, Amy's obviously the girl who played the girl in the ice cream shop. Uh, uh, she's, Amy uh, was the one who is the girl who jumped out of the freezer and uh, oh, the girl okay. at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she actually oh, won like a little. A little indie award for best scream queen for uh i think it was the thrills and chills horror yeah. awards yeah yeah it's good she was going. very proud of that one that's good going um <laughs> so obviously the movie's been made it's it's in production is there a place that people can buy it or rent it or stream it um, we're not on streaming just yet but there is a blu-ray uh, blu-ray release coming up in um well, pre-sale coming up in May. So if you follow us on our Instagram page on Clock Out Films on Instagram, um, we'll give you some updates on where to find it. Absolutely. I'll make sure and throw that into the, the link when I when I, when I put it up as well, when the episode goes up in a couple of weeks. And you also Sweet. follow uh, SRS Film, SRS Cinema. Yeah. Which is the, the distribution company. Nice. So, nice. Yeah, Ron um, Bot is pretty awesome. Great little just, underground just... distribution company. Mm -hmm. Fun stuff that on makes, his website. You know, if you want a lot that of like, makes it sound so dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> but those are usually the best. Yeah, he Absolutely. he distributes a lot of like <laughs> a lot of underground like horror and uh, and stuff like that, and a lot of I guess you could say trash cinema. So if you guys I mean, like want to try and find some other some other titles there, go there. A lot of them are fun to watch though. Like they to are. Be honest. Like I mean, as it says, there's... just picking something by random. I said, like I said earlier, and you usually find like a diamond in a rough. You'll find something entertaining about it. There's like there's certain movies like obviously I don't know whether you've seen the back catalog that we have. Myself and the King done an episode on what was called elevated horror. Mm. I fucking hate that title. I hate it so much. <laughs> we all do too. I, uh, like what makes you better than any other horror movie? And most right. of them are shy. <laughs> like most of them it's are shy. Because... So, like, being able to go into a horror movie, okay, some of them you have to sit there and think, going, well, right, what am I watching here? Scream was one. Who's the, trying to work out who the killer is? This, that, and the <laughs> other. Certain movies, obviously, Mute Letter One, 
uh, shows you who the killer is straight away. This one shows you who the killer is straight away. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? There's great when you have those kind of movies and you can just sit there, pretty much switch your brain off and enjoy the movie. I agree. Right. Yeah, we wanted it to be like that too. Like, um, I wanted it to have like a mystery element to it, but just through like the defender bender's eyes and not through the audience's eyes. <laughs> uh, it's, it's as if it was right there in front of them and they can't pick yeah, it up. Yeah, because that adds, it adds to the comedy a little bit more when they're like. Yeah. It's just like, oh, so the audience can be like, oh, Jesus Christ, you freaking idiots. Yeah. I'll, what I'll I don't like about... For 25 cent. What I don't like about Elevated <laughs> Horror, in a way, is they focus too much on their equipment budget and things to make it look nice on screen, when in reality, the thing that really makes it look nice is the stuff in front of the camera with the acting, the editing, especially, and um, the lighting. When a filmmaker is too focused on what equipment they have and they boast about, let's say they they film it on a res camera. Yes, they lose their passion because they're all focused on quality style, like 4K type film. Well, we shot this Hey, what are you trying to say? <laughs> I, I'm I talking wish, about like those really. I know like, what you're trying to say. Yeah. I'm just. I wish. I wish help. someone would tell Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> what I was going to go off of, Brett, was uh, what you're trying to say is that they're focusing too much on. Oh, we need this dolly shot here. We need the. We need the smoke machines here. We need the. Da, 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 Winner. When you're focusing too much on what's making the film, you're losing what's supposed to be in front of the film, which the most important thing is yeah. the story. You're it's looking, it's, looking it's, at it's at really like, because you know, like, as filmmakers, you're you're you are in this essence a storyteller. If you're mm-hmm. not telling the story, it's nearly like you're taking just, it away doing from. A, you're just doing a reel with the equipment. It's nearly like taking it away from the people that are watching it, going, "We well, we can't see what you're doing behind the camera." Yeah. So yep. it shouldn't really. Well, it should matter, obviously, but it shouldn't matter enough to to lose what's in front of the camera. Because, mm-hmm. um, I mean, one of the mottos that like I I go I go for was a uh, uh, Harold Ramis says this a lot, and he says it doesn't need to be pretty; it just needs to be funny. Absolutely, yeah. and it's it's a well, great it's a great well, line of that. Well. They'll look. They're looking at the trees and not the entire forest. It's like you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Another would, example but, um, would be, as a cinematographer, would be certain people with their big ass rigs on tripods, and they all have these cords everywhere, and it's it just looks massive and unnecessary. And it's like you don't need all that. You can. Envision something without when you're having just filming all those a, wires a sit down and couch dialogue TV. shot. Yeah, like when you're filming just headshots all the time, and you have like this rig that has like two monitors, several SDI cords on a tripod on a slider that takes about like an hour to set up, and you lose so much time um, in production just setting up such a complicated device when you're and it loses the actors and everybody else's um uh steel you, okay? like, you want to come over i can make it <laughs> <with you. laughs> it it loses the actor uh, the crew members attention to the detail what's being filmed in front of the camera is what i'm trying to say yes like um, so he's calling, like, calling himself a cinematographer now is he <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Um, my one of my probably my favorite scene in the movie is like um, with when the the boys are the advertising their, their business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. He has all the props. He has everything. That's why I'm, you know, <laughs> that's what that's where every you know that box of stuff that you were looking for that you were telling me off screen. That's where it all went. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, but yeah, so, that's where they're advertising their business, like to go off with Brett saying, like you know. They use a lot of shoulder rigs or tripods, but that scene that's just medium shot of them, and then it cuts to that wide shot, and there's the no around. They're all alone, and that's the joke. It's a visual 
joke in comedy and i love how they filmed that it's mm-hmm. and john and ethan's performance in natural ad lib just like wow it's very and natural then, what, like, what i did what i did wonder was did that guy ever get his fishing rod back <laughs> that was me or actually do you, or, or do um, you have well, that well if you saw uh, in the one, no, in the one uh, doc <laughs> hill where he tosses the guy into the water all tied up yeah there he goes that's his fitting end so he yeah. never gets his uh, fishing rod back yep poor guy, yeah, that, was poor guy that, that was a fun himself. stunt to do too being pushed into the water uh, but no like you said uh jim i think now's the time to kind of uh let's give some credit where it's due to the, the Ethan and John. Yes. Yes. Because they're, they're the stars of the show. Yes. Yeah. Besides you, Jim. Jim, you're awesome, awesome too. Hey, you can't have you can't have a good villain without great heroes, and my heroes kicked ass. Hell yeah. Can't have good heroes. Well, that's essentially true. Look at Die Hard. I mean, I mean, you want to define define hero? I don't think it's them. <laughs> <laughs> As we as we brought up earlier, uh, Blood Man and Chronic were the heroes. Yeah, well, true. I don't, true, true. I don't know how, but they were. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a good term called uh, the accidental hero, which is like the the Don Quixote. Uh, um, but yeah, the real hero say, of the story. But is yeah, for, for the, the most part, like the <laughs> dad's a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's uh, actually Ethan's real dad too the guy who plays awesome boy <laughs> yeah that's his real dad in real life because uh um, great that guy uh, was a we need, we needed a parent to kick them out and uh ethan was just like you know my dad can act a little bit why don't we just use him he's upstairs okay <laughs> um it was he was actually he played the asshole dad really well and wouldn't help them when they were stuck <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> um Let's see where they have to like bang on the door <laughs> The um like uh, we're coming down to time to just start winding down a bit now. Um, so what we do on the show is we do have um we do our own little rating system. Uh, we out of five slabs. Um, so obviously I'm not gonna ask you because you's made it. Um, I'll give you mine. Uh, I was gonna give it a three out of five. Hmm. I enjoyed the I enjoyed the humor. I did enjoy the humor. Some of the creative kills were were fun. Uh, obviously, I mentioned the the face one was pretty good, uh, and I'm not gonna go too deep into the other ones. Yeah, um, I, I I enjoyed the humor, enjoyed the thing, and I said to you off screen, we had other films on where it was just atrociously bad camera work. The camera work was good, the sound was good, the lighting was good. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, what's your film, gripes the... about? It? <laughs> what what, what um, did you not like? We would love to know. We we know. Yeah, we don't care. Yeah. So you have a magic fishing rod to an extent. (laughs) Uh, And (laughs) the guy is a a human. We're we're taking it, right? (laughs) The villain's a human. Mm -hmm. But he's able to pull somebody along with a fishing rail that's attached to his trousers. I get the, I get the, the funny, the humor nature of it, but that, that's about it really. The, yeah. the, the, logic, without, the logic behind uh, how that would uh, be possible. Yeah. Without I mean, spoiling anything. Not, and I would future. laugh my ass off every time we would shoot something like that. I was like, this is so stupid. <laughs> and as I said, it's not a, it's not even a gripe because of the type of movie that it is. Like if, they, if this movie tried to take itself seriously to a full extent where they're going, yeah, this is going in and we're going with this, this tone no humor and then this starts happening you're like what is going on here it's just like wait a minute uh okay so he has like a super the, fishing rod i guess the, uh, the fishing the fishing net at the at the lifeguard stand that nobody sees <laughs> i mean he could be possessed by you know a killer uh pirate you never know or something steve, you know? steve the pirate <laughs> <laughs> we thought of that when we shot that scene with the uh, at the uh, at the boogie board hut, and we were like, just like, well, wouldn't they see it get killed? And I was just like, eh, yeah, but you know, the movie doesn't take itself seriously anyway. So let's. Just... I like as I said, for me, like, I I enjoyed it. There wasn't much. You can bend some of the logic here and there. I I mean, like I enjoyed it. As I said, there wasn't much gripes. There was just a couple of bits where I was like, okay, maybe it could have been done a little bit differently. Instead of using maybe the fishing hook, maybe having like a harpoon thing that they have or whatever. 
like a wench but, kind of thing to pull yeah on. not even that like so do you know like if you have like a spear fishing gun and then have it oh, really okay. off so, and weak and yeah. like, like wrap it in like a batman yeah. thing rather than an actual hook just hooking onto yeah. his trousers something mm -hmm. like that Oh, we but, got ideas okay. for a oh, possible we, sequel, too. Oh, if we had the budget for that, we would definitely go all out. <laughs> that I mean, if you're doing a sequel, you can fly me over and I'll help. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Give you a part in the movie. Yeah. I, I, I could be a better <laughs> villain than Jim could. Oh, he's calling you out, Jim. <laughs> I mean, I have a better I have a better beard, too. Yeah. Well, we I guess actually, I, I, actually, like a couple... I, actually look, I actually look a little homeless. <laughs> <laughs> he could yeah. he could base it you know maybe Fishman Sam did meet his demise in the end and didn't drown and and you know and then uh, he has to get his brother you know from across the seas to help him out Spo to spoiler him. spoiler alert <laughs> <laughs> I avoided spoilers through the whole thing basically and then you threw it away oh uh, yeah yeah it's kind uh, of funny spoiler you alert the heroes get the villain in the end yeah I always who would have ever envisaged that. That had never I, happened before. I <laughs> Although, lads, I, w I will say, horseshoe crabs are creepy as fuck. Aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Which, by the way, I have to recommend this movie if you want to watch more beach horror. I saw it while um, uh, Slaughter Beach had a screening at uh, Creature Feature Weekend, and it's this movie called Crabs. Check that out. Yeah, it's really good. It's Gremlins meets, like, Kaiju movies and um the director pierce oh, oh. he's a really cool guy so if you want him on the show like he'll be he'll be open to reach out well I, 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 we'll have a chat with you after afterwards and we'll see where we go from there oh, yeah. um but as i said to you before we came on i have a question to ask two of you haven't seen one of the movies so you are out for this minute in time uh -oh. jim american uh -oh. werewolf in london or dog soldiers which one is better oof um you not to sound cliche but that's go with american you know we're from london um one soldiers is great it has you know it's you call it has, crap on rick baker man <laughs> and john yeah, dog, dog, dog soldiers is a great movie i love the it almost feels like a carpenter movie because the characters are isolate one location while this deadly force breaks in which was something carpenter always did and i love the idea of it um but yeah to go with american horror story in london um because it, it blends some American horror story. Hold on now. This is a different movie we're talking about here. <laughs> Sorry. So that, 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 Sorry. Point, that point Sorry. default goes to Dog Soldiers. ADD. My brain's a big Monty Python episode. It changes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, American horror, American Werewolf in London for me because uh, just the effect and just that you rarely see the full werewolf because um, – you know, they use less is more like when it's chasing the business guy in the tunnel and you just see that wide shot of he's stuck on the escalator and you just see like the front of the werewolf crawling you just oh, see it that's yeah. it brilliant it's like Ooh, fuck there, like that the scene me. i always think back to um is that scene like just the very very end because the way like rick B baker like built the puppet like you know you see it's like um expression change david it's me and you see like the the anger yeah, the rest loosen up from the brow and he's about to like get his heart back like like, like that is just great filmmaking so we have a running debate uh between myself and carl um as to which one is better i ha i'm a dog soldiers is the best werewolf movie yeah really? um he's obviously american werewolf and we've started taking to asking guests right so mm -hmm. we've asked eight guests uh, you two don't count at the minute, so ten guests now, right? Uh, mm -hmm. As to which one was better, we just care to hazard a guess what the score is now. The, it's only there's only six people that have scored because four people hadn't seen both, so two of you and two others hadn't seen both, so they don't count. What would you reckon the score is? Um, I guess would Amer American Wire from London have the highest score? Or over dog oh. soldiers? No, the other way around. Oh, really? See, yeah. I'm surprised on that because I, I always consider the American Werewolf to be more the classic, so we would get the the edge a little bit more. But see, okay. I I've I like I have an we have a, an episode which is our most popular episode that has 1,100 views on it, um, where we actually debated which one was better, as wow. to why one is better than the other one. Now, don't get me wrong, people take it the wrong way. 
I I have American Werewolf in London too, and not by a lot. <laughs> but I think Dog Soldiers is a stronger story, mm -hmm. um, better acting, and the ending of American Werewolf in London is just a little bit too rushed for me. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think one, once the climax happened, it just kind of kind of gone. Yeah, it's the like hard the, um, <laughs> but the Jeff. Goldblum. It's not to say it, it's not it's not to say it's it's a phenomenal movie and especially oh, well ahead great. of its time. And uh, people that even try and say the Hell and I love Joe Dante and the Hell and um, but that's nowhere near. I was just going to say I was like, what about the Hell Because that's I watched that recently. I'm like that movie holds up, and I haven't watched it in like it. It, it does hold years. up, but I just don't think it's on. They're them two levels. I don't think so either. But it's I gotta still... watch Dog Soldiers. Now, what about oh, yeah. this, Greg? What about I have, Best I have the DVD. I might rewatch it after this. <laughs> yeah, same. I might watch Dog Soldiers after this. What... Now, Greg, what about Best Vampire Movie? Which Hold on, one... Dan. Before you say that, though, my favorite werewolf movie of all time is actually go. American Werewolf in Paris. Right. I'm just keeping him <laughs> out of the chat now. He's gone. Good luck. Look him out, Greg. Look him out. <laughs> I knew it was coming. That, that is one of the worst sequels ever made. <laughs> ever. I know. I thought, was gonna, I thought Brad was going to say Teen Wolf. <laughs> I didn't mind Teen Wolf because, again, I, I didn't Teen take Wolf. itself too seriously. Now and... Teen Wolf 2. <laughs> oh, I love Teen Wolf. Intended. <laughs> right, let's see. Best Vampires. Um, so, Best Vampire to be different. So if I wanted best Dracula, I'd say Gary Oldman. Mm. Not okay. the best movie. Uh, yeah. I think I think Christopher Lee had the best movie. Horror. Uh, I, agree. I agree with you Bella, there. Bella had the best everything else. Yeah. Um, yeah. The movie that Gary Oldman in was terrible, but he's he's ideally the closest to Dracula. But my favorite vampire movie would be 30 Days a Night. Ooh. Mm. Okay. Yeah, sure. yeah. Proper, absolute, vicious motherfuckers. Right. <laughs> they are. I actually just watched that movie like a couple months ago, and it's very entertaining. Josh Hartnett was brilliant, actually, because he came off the back of doing a couple of like rom com comedies and stuff mm -hmm. to go into <laughs> this. And I was like, well, uh, Ben Foster was very good as well. Yeah, I do agree with you. Like, um, rewind a bit. Um, yeah, Chris Lee really had the best Dracula movies. I love, love Lugosi. He was my introduction. As yeah. like his performance is Dracula, but yeah, Lee Horror of Dracula, um, Dracula's Rose from the Grave. They are phenomenal movies. Like, it's like even I, I, um, even the Futurist, the nineteen seventy two. That's even pretty good. Yeah, yeah. What about there's the also, Spanish version of the original Dracula? I was actually guy. going to say there's was, there was also the Spanish one, um, which <laughs> is very good. That was filmed on the on the set of the original Dracula, wasn't it? And mm -hmm. it was done at night. Yep, that's yeah, right. Yeah, when when Bella and uh, Tom Browning went to uh, wrap up, <laughs> the, the lads would sneak on and make a movie. Yeah, look. Like, all right, all right, come on in. We're done. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can shoot your version now. You know, this that, that's just been a long-standing debate that we've had since me like. Me and Carl only know each other. We've been doing this about a year and a half. Um, and that's been a long-standing debate that we've had. Uh, well, that and which Texas Chainsaw Massacre is better. But, I no, see. Second one. Two. No, Two. I have uh, I have 03. No, it's between the 74 and 03. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Because okay. uh, he Carl hates remakes. He hates them. I hate them as well. But there's some good Me ones. Too. Um, awesome. But there I'd are be... some good ones that like 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 for a stint there's there's good ones uh like like in the 80s we had the we had the john carpenter remake of the thing we had the, the fly we had the fly you know fly. so when, when there's artistic intent behind the remake they're good yeah. when, then, when, don't forget, made, don't forget the, don't the, forget the greatest remake know. the greatest remake of all time was the 2010 nightmare on elm street <laughs> well, 2016 Ghostbusters. I mean, said, I mean, said said nobody ever. <laughs> that 2016 Ghostbusters isn't even a movie. That's just. <laughs> I only know uh, three I, Ghostbuster I, movies: '84, '89, and you know, 2020, 19, 21. Yeah, Afterlife. 
Afterlife yeah. was fucking phenomenal, lads. Phenomenal. Oh, yeah, it was. People still try to make the Ghostbuster uh, 2016 thing a political thing. It's not a political thing. It's, it's, it's just shy. It's fans against the establishment. That's all it is. I, I'm That's sorry. I, I, I understand what, what they were going for and what they tried to do and what was happening at the time. But that movie was just awful. Yeah, that's the thing. Like I, like they think, oh, people hate this movie because it's all females. No, I feel no, bad. The, for cast, the cast are great in their own stuff. The like, like Kate McKinnon's great on SNL, and you know, and so are the other girls. And but the movie just, just doesn't just work. And the, the yeah. studio was just way too like had their claws sinked into it too much. No, uh, and then bringing fucking Chris Hemsworth in as the as the. The, yeah. what, what should be the what would have been the eye candy I'm like <laughs> oh, yeah 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 I was like yes because he's going to be a secretary the man's <laughs> jacked as fuck <laughs> most I mean, realistic thing in that movie probably <laughs> which is playing a lot but um, yeah lads it's been an absolute pleasure to sit down and have a chat with you uh, this evening and anytime you want to come back you're more than welcome oh absolutely uh, any, anytime you have anything that's due to come out or whatnot, make sure and send it away and we'll we'll, we'll put it out for you. Yeah. Um, and whatnot. Um, I'm waiting on Fisherman Sam there to uh, to make a reappearance in the next one. <laughs> for Slaughter Beach 2. Well, actually, we're gonna, there's a sequel we have in mind is Slaughter Peak, where we take the Defender Manners to the mountains. I mean, I, I, could play, I could play a Bigfoot if you want one. Absolutely. Ooh. I mean, we were going to like work in some Sasquatch stuff into the screenplay. So, you were so, I mean, Fishman, everything, everything comes full circle. There you go. Fishman, <laughs> um, Fishman Sam's meets the Bigfoot. Sounds but, like uh, but, I'll, I'll, <laughs> but I will take the time then to talk about some upcoming stuff uh, before we yeah. sign. Uh, uh, my buddy Brian Wild, he's working on a short called The Boog, which is about a, a booger monster that attacks a, a mother and child. Um, during a a pandemic, and right. have, <laughs> not like we hadn't had one of them in a while. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm working on a romantic, uh, dark comedy called Hex Girlfriend, which is about which is will star John McCoy as this uh, ruthless womanizer who gets caught up into a coven. And oh. well. That's not what I was expecting to go with there, but okay. <laughs> and then we're working on uh, a, a short for a anthology film called Ultimate Terror, which is being produced by uh, Jeremy Moorhead, who's actually a, a fellow podcaster uh, for Epic Film Guys. And uh, yeah, he's putting a little anthology movie together called Ultimate Terror, and he wants us to do, do a segment. I do, I do like uh, anthologies now, I will say. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think Creep Show is the is the the golden the standard. <laughs> yeah. Apart from that, the one that they brought out was it twenty sixteen or twenty seventeen? Uh, the show. Yeah. Or, or are you talking about like Creep Show three that uh, that direct the video one? No, no, no. There's a show they rebrought it out. Oh yeah, the Shutter you... Show. I watched a couple yeah. episodes of it. Brett watched a little bit more than I have. Brett, you're a fan, right? It's, it was okay. Uh, a little oh, bit yeah, forgettable understand. compared to the first two, but I like still worth third, watching. I like the second season. The third one's yes. free. Yeah. They get, it gets better season. this season. I'll the say The first that. season's a little I might, weak. I might go back to it then. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember you to told me to watch that Christmas special, and that was pretty freaking funny. Yeah. Or <laughs> the, the freaking animal. Uh, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Have um, any of you got anything else you need to, to throw out there? Yeah, so I actually just finished my first feature film called X Night Escape from Warpel. Uh, it's based I thought on you were going to say How to Fish. <laughs> uh, nah, I'm bored. Um, it's based from my own uh, comic book series that I self published called X Night. He's a dark gothic superhero. Um, it's very inspired from Batman, The Shadow, and Spawn, um, and the movie is also, he fights demons in this purgatory realm known as Warp Hell, so it's inspired from like Evil Dead, Hellraiser, and... Um, Constantine and stuff, that kind of way. Yeah, yeah. And um, so we 
it, you know, he goes to the war pal to fight these demons. So otherwise, they'll come into the real world of Rockwood City where he fights. So imagine if you take like Tim Burton's Batman and, you know, have him against fight against the Cenobites or something like that. That's sort of what I was going with. Nice. Um, nice. Yeah. So try to have a nice, like, you know, dark, quirky tone to it, not take itself too seriously. I didn't want it to be like the Nolan Batman movies, more like the Burton Batman movies where it's having fun and dark. The better ones? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> not, not that the, not that the Nolan ones were bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. I love Ledger's performance overall as an actor. Like, he's brilliant. Still, still, still not even the best Joker though. Ah. Who do you think's the best Joker, Greg? Jack. Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what came? It's funny because um, I fucking hated. I hated the movie. I thought it was terrible. I thought what? it was a bad. I thought it was a the Joker movie. Oh, I mean, really? I thought. I, thought, I, thought I was, was, I actually movie. thought it was. Uh, I thought it was two hours of ripping, falling down off, that a Michael Douglas movie. Oh yes, oh. his descent is in my room of that. His descent into madness, which which, ironically, is directed by a Batman director. Yes, <laughs> falling down is it? Joel, Joel Schumacher. Schumacher. Oh yeah, the worst <laughs> Batman movie. <laughs> I don't know. It depends on what you count the worst one as. Yeah, true. true. <laughs> I hope you're not going to say that. I love Robin. Batman and Robin because I love that. I love Batman. Yeah. Yeah. It is movie. it is the worst one, but uh, one of the lads uh, that comes on the show, Tim's down Ted, he, uh, he puts it out and he's like, it's the best Batman movie, lads. He just winds people up with it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got Arnie in there. you got Uma Terman in there. Him and Brett will, will, have, will get along then because he always <laughs> tries to say it's the best Batman movie. I mean, I never minded it. I, I watched it a lot as a kid. Same. Yeah. I mean, I'm an Adam West is. fan. I if you're going, if you're going to compare qualities, yeah, it does. It is the most lackluster. But like, I don't know. I think it's back watchable. credit card. Back credit card. Never leave the game. Game without it. <laughs> but um, yeah. So they they they'll be intrigued to come out, and once they're coming out, and let us know, and we'll certainly share it around for you and stuff. Um, Absolutely. And as it says, anytime you want to come on and shoot the shit. You yeah, know where we are. Yeah. Let you know. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Norm man. Normally, normally the second time someone comes back, it's a bit easier because it's not all about one thing. Yeah. Where, where you can kind of go off on a tangent, and that's yeah. normally where. The I think we kind of did did away, in a way here too. So <laughs> that ha that happens quite regularly. Too, I mean, you have that. three ADHD guys, so who are right. obsessed with movies. So we're going to talk about thirty movies when we're supposed to be talking about one. You know. I mean, I, I, I'm probably sure if I ever got tested, I'd probably, I'd be the same thing. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, but lads, it, it's been an absolute pleasure tonight. Um, hey, thank you. Yeah, thanks for uh, having us. Thanks, thanks for being a great been, host, Greg. Yeah, it's you're great. an awesome host. I'm yeah. the host with the most. Don't yeah. worry, lads. I'm gonna run that in all the lads' faces. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll close out the show this evening the same way I close out the show every single Friday night that I close out the show. That is. Uh, in the words of the great George A. Romero lads, stay scared. Ooh.